So welcome again. This is question number 10 now on the cards. Just have a look. Uh, in this question, we find cash at bank 4000, data 86, credit of 43, stock 62. Then we have fixed asset, loan is towards the credit side. By now, you are familiar with this, that it is a liability. Reserve for doubtful debts, also known as provision for doubtful debts given in the in the trial. So it will be put up towards the credit side of p &L. Purchases, sales, drawings are given in trial. You will directly subtract it from the capital. Printing charges, electric charges, bank charges, motor expenses, motor car expenses, then returns. Debit side, it is sales return. Credit side, it is purchases return. Salary is 11,000. Rent of go down is there. Interest on loan is also given. Rates and taxes, discount, which is given to us the debit side, means it is discount allowed and it is discount received. Correct? Freight on purchases, it is a direct expense. Then we have been given insurance premium. I will talk about this item because some information is related to it. Then office expense, bad debts given in trial, no problem. Capital 162. Now question states, prepare trading and profit and loss account. And there are some informations. So we will take up the information first. And then we'll proceed to finish up the question. So in order to do this question, question number 10, we prepare first of all trading. And then of course, other relevant accounts. This is the trading account I'm preparing correct after having prepared trading we shall prepare now profit and loss account then we'll prepare balance sheet also pretty long question this is the balance sheet intentionally I am leaving some space over here because PL account might need more space Profit and loss account, then trading account, correct? Trading account. Question number 10 we are picking up. In the information, first information is related to fixed asset, correct? First information is related to fixed asset. I am looking out for calculator where it is. There are lots of sheets also lying here. Let me just have a look over the calculator. Yes, here it is lying here. So, first item is question number 10 actually. First item, first information we are talking about is with respect to depreciate fixed asset. Now, there are lots of fixed asset in this question. We have gone through the question. We found out, in fact, it is given fixed asset 1,17,400. Okay. So fixed assets are directly given as fixed asset in the trial. Fixed assets, 1,17,400. No props. We will subtract 10% depreciation. It will be 11,740. 11,740. So 1,17,400 minus 11,740. So net amount will be one lakh five thousand six hundred and sixty. Now this depreciation you will also write towards the debit side of your PL. Depreciation on fixed assets eleven thousand seven hundred and forty. Then Another information is with respect to closing stock. No problem. Closing stock is actually 44,000. We will simply write here towards the credit side. Closing stock is 44,000. Then in the balance sheet, we will write closing stock. Closing stock is 44,000. Fine. Closing stock is over now. Next, we are related with reserve for doubtful debts is to be maintained at 5% of the data. It is an information. So first of all, we write data. We know the treatment of the adjustment related to the, to the data. Data as per trial balance is 40, in fact, 86,000. 
in the adjustment there is no treatment related to bad debts remember one thing only we have to create reserve for doubtful debts so i will simply write provision for doubtful debts provision for doubtful debts also known as reserve for doubtful debts and we have to create it at the rate of 5% at the rate of 5% it will be 4300 isn't it so 86000 minus 4300 debtors will be 81700 net and this provision because it is given in adjustment will also be written towards the debit side of pnl provision for doubtful debts 4300 then we have in this case information related to insurance premium now see actually in the balance sheet uh, insurance see in the trial balance actually insurance premium is 5500 insurance premium insurance premium is given to you as 5500 now question is states below that insurance premium includes 4000 paid towards proprietor's policy suppose i happen to be the proprietor of a business correct now now i have taken a policy for myself so question is states that when we take the policy we have to pay the premium also so question is state that whatever this insurance premium has been paid by the business enterprise it includes premium of 4000 which is related to proprietor's life insurance policy so it is a personal expense it will be considered as a drawing i will write here proprietor's less proprietor's premium proprietor's premium means it is a personal expense you will consider it as a drawings is it clear to you so you will subtract 4000 first of all from here and later on from capital also in the balance sheet we will write the capital later on i will write here proprietor's premium we will subtract it it will be considered as a personal expense it will be considered as drawings is it clear to you then remaining insurance premium so remaining insurance premium must be on the policy which might have been taken by the enterprise because most of the business enterprises they insure themselves from the various risk and eventualities so question states that out of 5500 4000 was related to premium which belong to the policy taken by the proprietor so that will be considered as personal expense so business expense is 1500 but question further states this business expense covers a period from 1 4 2018 to 30th of june 2019 just sorry for this trouble i will have to pick up this phone so i will explain this point correct in order to explain this point i will have to take another sheet okay see here insurance premium is 5500 no doubt about that we know that out of this insurance premium 4000 is related to premium on policy taken by proprietor premium on policy taken by proprietor so it will be treated as personal expense so 4000 you will take it as personal expense remaining will be considered as business expense so remaining amount now is actually 1500 without any doubt 
remaining is 1500 but question states that this remaining premium which you have paid it covers a period actually your current accounting period is starts from 1 4 2018 and it ends on 31st of 3 2019 but question states that but question states that this remaining 5500 covers a period from 1 4 2018 to 30th of June 2019 this is the problem that being your accounting year is closing here but this 1500 covers a period from 1 4 2018 to 30th of June so that means out of this 1500 three months premium will be considered as advance you got my point or not three months period will be considered as advance so you will have to subtract it so here in PL account remaining amount is 1500 now I will subtract prepaid or advance premium now advance premium will be of three months but how will you compute 3 by 12 or 3 by 15 3 by 15 because this 1500 as I was talking about this covers a period of 15 months so if 15 months if 15 months premium is 1500 what will be the premium for three months that is 1500 into 3 by 15 not 3 by 12 is it clear to you or not so that is how you are going to compute it uh, but you will have to exercise a little bit of caution so one fifth one fifth will make a 300 so 1200 will be the amount which you will reflect here and this advance will also be presented over here prepaid insurance premium prepaid insurance premium prepaid insurance premium is actually 300 correct so this is the interesting point in this question in fact no further information is there so now we can proceed to do this question first item is cash at bank so cash at bank we will write it over here cash at bank cash and bank actually anyway cash at bank I have written 4000 next item is sundry daters which we have written I will write the amount of creditors sundry creditor s oblique c means sundry creditors don't get confused it is sundry creditors correct I will have to use the short form what can I do I have to do lots of questions in the class so I will have to use the short form in the examination you write fixed asset we have taken care of loan this time loan is also there loan is towards the credit side it it is a liability but there is no percentage given this time so no problem 30,000 reserve for doubtful debts given in the trial will is presented towards the credit side so that is reserve for doubtful debts as per trial as per trial 3000 then we have purchases and sales purchases I will write here amount of purchases is 140000 amount of sales is 230000 230000 then we have been given drawings I did tell earlier that drawings which is given in the trial shall be directly subtracted from the capital account drawings 12,000 only one treatment because item relates to trial then printing charges printing charges lots of expenses have been given printing charges 1800 then electric charges 
electric charges are 2200 bank charges bank charges are 1600 motor car expenses it is not motor car it is motor car expenses motor car expenses given to you 3600 then <coughs> you have been given returns item which is given to us the debit side is sales return I can subtract sales return from sales but I am writing it over the opposite side we can do so similarly return which are given towards the credit side are purchases return and I am writing it over here purchases returns that is 2600 putting up towards the opposite side itself means we are subtracting it from purchases salaries are given now 11,000 no adjustments no adjustments with respect to salaries 11,000 then rent of go down is given rent of go down rent of go down is 5,500 correct then we have been given rates and taxes lots of expenses have been given rates and taxes 2100 discount which is given to us the debit side is your discount allowed 2400 discount which is given to us the credit side is your discount received discount received is 1600 freight on purchases is a direct expense so freight it is freight not freight freight on purchases freight on purchases 1200 insurance premium we have already taken care of office expenses now it is written office expenses office expenses in this case 3000 bad debts which appear in the trial balance will be written only once over here bad debts as per trial 2000 we have capital now capital is 162000 it will be written in the balance sheet and we have done all the adjustment already so all we need to do is to find out the gross profit which you will do it by yourself but in this question let me check out whether all the information has been taken care of cash syndicators stock fixed asset loan reserve purchases drawing printing electric bank motor car then returns salary rent disc rates freight insurance office expense bad debts well we have taken so gross profit will be equal to 69200 or should be 69200 then this gross profit which you have derived will be posted here 69200 then you are going to tally your this account you will drive your net profit or loss whatever it is so in this case there is net profit transferred to capital 16,660 you will have to tally it by yourself this net profit will be now added back over here 16,660 Then finally, you will take where is the calculator? One lakh sixty-two thousand minus four thousand minus twelve thousand plus sixteen thousand six hundred sixty. That will give you one lakh sixty-two thousand six hundred and sixty. So this is how this particular question will be done. Is it clear to you or not? 
So after finishing it off, now we will do question number nine. I'm trying to do all the unsolved questions and solved ones I will leave it for homework. Correct? So question number nine, now we are picking up, but not tough questions as you have already seen. Actually, I have already told you in this particular chapter, there's questions on provision for uh, bad debts or simply bad debts, provision for bad debts are important. Trading account, profit and loss account and then balance sheet. We are now picking up question number 9. Correct? This is your question number 9. This is your trading account. And then this is your profit and loss account. And finally, this is your balance sheet. So the first First we will pick up, okay, the information will, which is given below, say here, given it is closing stock 1,70,000, I will write it over here, closing stock 1,70,000. We know that closing stock also appears in the balance sheet. So in the balance sheet, I will write here closing stock 1,70,000. Then question states, sales include sales tax 50,000, correct? Now this is something new. First of all, I will write the item of sales. You can see amount of sales, actually third item, and not third item. In fact, sales where sales are given fifth or sixth item, it is 8,10,000. Question says, sales tax. Uh, sales include sales tax of 50,000 correct so because sales amount includes sales tax you will subtract it in fact this sales tax you are supposed to pay to the government it is not your sale so question states sales amount includes sales tax you will subtract it so sales tax is actually 50,000 honestly speaking nowadays sales tax is not there rather GST is in prevalence but still it is given so we will have to go by that so we will subtract it from sales number one and it is a liability for us we will present it in the liability it's considered as a current liability sales tax sales tax payable you haven't paid it yet because you have included it in the sales then we have been given depreciate furniture by 20 percent so not a tough one furniture just have a look in your trial balance where is it furniture is three lakh fifty thousand as per trial balance furniture i will write the write in the short form and furniture here is 3,50,000. You will write 3,50,000. You will write the depreciation, 20% given. 20% will be 70,000. In the outer column, you will write 2,80,000. This depreciation will be presented in the PL also, depreciation. that is 70,000 correct then we have advertisement to be written off in five years now see here advertisement is one lakh it's a very suppose if no information would have been given with respect to advertising 
you would have simply written the entire amount in the PL. But here the question states that this advertisement expense need to be written off in five years. Actually, what does it mean? First of all, try to understand. See, this is first year, this is second year, this is third year, this is fourth year, this is fifth year. We must have, we means the business enterprise, must have spent some amount on advertisement, say 1 lakh. So my entry at that time would have been advertisement account debit to bank account or cash account. Now this expense which we incurred is a loss of course, because it's an expense, not exactly loss. So you will have to put it towards the debit side. Whenever anything is put towards the debit side of the PL, it means we are writing it off. First of all, you must understand the meaning of writing off. Writing off means putting the item towards the debit side of profit and loss account. But question states that this advertisement expense should be written off in five years. One, two, three, four, five. Not in that year itself in which you spend the amount. So we might have spent the amount, say, in the first year. So we cannot debit it entirely to profit and loss account. Question is stated that it should be written off in five years. Now one lakh divided by five. So logic is that every year that means in the first year we should debit only 20,000, in the second year 20,000, in the third year 20,000, in the fourth year 20,000 and in the fifth year 20,000. So advertisement expenses we have incurred 1 lakh but out of that we will debit only 20,000 to PNL this year and this 80,000 we will debit in the next 4 years. So, what I am going to do, see here, question states that only one-fifth should be debited. So, that means four-fifth we cannot debit. So, I will subtract less four-fifth. If I am subtracting four-fifth, it means I am debiting only one-fifth. This is what question is interested in. So, 20,000 will be debited in the current year and 80,000 we will debit it in the next year four years, till then it will be considered a deferred advertisement expenses, correct, deferred expenditure, deferred expenditure means expenditure has been incurred, but you haven't yet written it off, so advertisement yet to be written off, yet to be written off. 80,000 is still to be written off. It will appear as deferred expenditure. It is a deferred expenditure. Is it clear to you or not? Then we have in this case uh, salaries outstanding 12,000 and salary paid in advance is 10,000. So no problem in this case. Salaries you write. Amount of salary is given to you. To one lakh twenty thousand. Question states that there is outstanding salary of twelve thousand. You will add twelve thousand. Question also states that there are prepaid salaries also. Prepaid you will subtract ten thousand. So one lakh twenty two. Outstanding salaries will be presented towards the liability side. Outstanding salaries. Outstanding salaries are 12,000. Salaries prepaid. I will write here. Prepaid expenses are assets. That is 10,000. Not a tough question. Only point is with respect to advertisement. Rest of the question you can do it by yourself also. Isn't it? Capital. Now we move over to the trial balance items. Capital is 4 lakh. We will write here 4 lakhs.
then drawings are there drawings will be subtracted drawings are given in trial you need to exercise caution when drawings are given in trial only one treatment is there you have to subtract it from the capital 50,000 opening stock this time is given to you opening stock remember one thing opening stock might be given might not be given as was the case in the last question 75,000 in the last question there was no opening stock 75,000 we have purchases then the amount of purchases which is given to you is 4,20,000 then we have sundry creditors creditors will appear towards the liability side creditors amount is 75,000 you must have noticed these questions are very easy in comparison to the one which we did earlier Dators, I did tell you also that e since these questions are easier and you have already been tested regarding this question in your earlier phase of education so at this level they will ask you definitely st statement sort of questions uh, as we did question number 16 daters uh, are 1 lakh 20 thousand no information related to daters the student feel very happy when no information is related to daters sales we have already written now discount is given to you discount given in the debit column is expense discount allowed discount allowed is 16,000 discount which is given towards the credit side we will write here discount received discount received as you can see is 18,000 commission we will write here commission allowed it means because it is given towards the debit side it's an expense commission is 12,000 however commission given towards the credit side is an income so commission received is 14,000 return so many times I have told you debit means sales return so I'm I have a habit of writing here you can say that way we can simply directly subtract it from sales also sales return 16,000 returns given in the credit column are purchases return you can subtract directly from purchases or you can put it over here purchases returns purchases returns are 20,000 salaries we have already incorporated then rent and rates are there rent and rates they are oblique are 40,000 then postage in telegram I will write P and T just to save some time 25,000 then we have been given loan loan will appear towards the liability side amount of loan is 3 lakh 10 no problem no percentage is given it's a liability interest it is not clearly mentioned whether this interest is on loan or not anyway it is interest 20,000 you will write only 20,000 furniture already done brand names and design sometimes students get confused by these items brand names trademarks copyright all these are considered as intangible fixed asset brand names designs you will write it towards the asset side 60,000 advertisement is done cash in hand is now there so cash in hand one lakh fifty thousand 
कैश एट बैंक इज सिक्सटी फ्रेट इनवर्ड ट्रेडिंग अकाउंट डेबिट साइट फ्रेट इनवर्ड ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड वट इज ड्यूटी ड्रॉबैक्स ड्यूटी ड्रॉबैक्स मीन्स ड्यूटी ड्रॉबैक्स इज अ वर्ड विच इज रिलेटेड टू इम्पोर्ट और एक्सपोर्ट बट हेयर इट रिलेट्स टू इम्पोर्ट्स when our enterprise imports what we call goods from foreign countries sometime government imposes taxes but sometime government withdraws withdraws that taxes that is known as duty drawbacks withdrawal of taxes so it is a gain to you because your cost purchase cost will decrease so duty drawbacks you can subtract from purchases or you can put it towards the opposite side duty drawbacks putting it over here means you are subtracting it from what we call purchases duty drawbacks duty drawbacks uh, are 10000 it is given in trial balance and it will be written only once so and we have already done rest of the things so now we are in a position to tally it out so just find out your gross profit is how much gross profit is 429 we will write gross profit here 429 now we will compute the net profit now net profit actually written 159 i think it is 1 lakh 36000 let me compute it just to verify the things correct 429 plus 18 plus 14 minus 70 minus 20 minus 122 minus 16 minus 12 minus 40 Minus twenty-five, minus twenty. Yes, it is one lakh thirty-six thousand. So just rectify this one. It, your net profit, which is given as one fifty-nine, actually is one thirty-six. Correct. This net profit will be added to the capital net profit will be added. and it is 136 so finally capital which will be reflected will be this much 486 486 correct this is how so you must have seen actually why i was telling that let the questions very slim chances in fact no chances to be very honest with you this is the balance sheet there is hardly any chance as far as what we call these type of questions are concerned you are in my opinion um in fact will be given only questions which we did in earlier before the lengthier questions correct so we end up this particular session and uh, i think as far as rest of the questions are concerned there is one question only one unsolved question you will try to do this question of your own no problem so rest of the questions are solved so we finish up this on this count that we have comprehensively covered in fact much more than what is given in module in module only smaller questions have been given remember one thing uh, that to related to what we call as i said pro bad debts provision for discount and debtors so on that count we end up this particular session and this particular chapter but stress upon only that part which we did earlier correct on such note we end up this chapter